Hey, you guys, it's me, Miss Bobby. I'm not for sure how long it's been since I've put up a, a video. I don't know. But I'll give y'all a quick update. Um, my original court date, which was yesterday, had been pushed back um, because I have a public defender and he requested more time. So I didn't have to go to court yesterday. Um... I've been filling out several applications all over, like in the nearby towns, um, sending in resumes and trying to remain positive, um, being very careful with the little bit of money that I had coming in or that I had setting, sitting to the side. It's very, very hard. It's very, very hard. Um. I'm good though. I've paid absolutely what can be paid because it couldn't wait any longer. And I worry about what's next to be due or past due with the next check. Um I don't know. I'm trying to remain positive, y'all. I'm trying to I'm trying to think really, really positive. I'm going to a job fair tomorrow, which will be Friday the 29th. I'm going to a job fair. Everyone, people don't understand the struggle when you're serious about a job. A lady's like, you know, that job right there, they don't let you leave until you're finished. And so you could work who knows how many hours. And then my nephew's like, auntie, I worked 14 hours one day. And I won't lie to you, the longest I've ever worked is uh, 12 and a half hours in one day. And we only had to do that like two days back to back. But I also remember being dedicated to my job because it paid my bills. And it paid my bills very well. Like when I was take, when I was on the up and up, two checks could write it, pay all my bills. Two and a half checks was awesome. So that means I had a check and a half to play around with, with finance. And I did really, really good, you know. So that way, when I did lose my job, back when I did, I had a safety net in the bank because I saved money. And I didn't wait for, you know, the for me to be penalized and then you get all this back pay. I lost my job in December and in January I was working again, thanks to a friend of mine. But now I'm in a position to where I'm not making as much money as I was and I'm not able to save anything. So I'm, I'm really looking for that, that, that job to call me and say, we need you. We need you six days a week. We need you 12 hours a day. And no, I'm not trying to work myself into the ground. I'm just trying to get myself out of the hold. Cause trust and believe, I would like to think that this is the, this is a brand new year. That if I was to get a job sooner than later, that before I hit mid year, they would be then slowed down, hours would be then changed and fluctuated and everybody be even out across the board. But I'll be then got myself out of the hole. I won't be in a, in a danger zone to where I'm just going to lose something in the, in the next 30 days because my income is more secure and there's more of it. So I'm praying for that. I'm, I'm, I'm holding my fingers tightly together and crossed for that and you know god has the last us so in everything so the only other thing that um i don't want to i don't want to do a complaint i don't want to complain i just will say that the ex-boyfriend is definitely s sending me mixed signals and i guess that's my fault because i allowed it to be um trying to reach out and communicate even when we know we're not supposed to it's probably the number one don't do it just leave it alone but when you do that it kind of leaves for a room of doubt like is it really over when all of this is said and done should we try again and i guess for me it's, it's really solely on me because i'm the one that has to go i'm the one that went to jail i'm the one that has to pay all these fines and court fees and go to classes and hope that i can get this taken off my record so really the that question lies with me Will I give him another chance? Will I take him back? Will I try it again? But the conversations that we have leave the door swinging. He still cares. He doesn't care. He wants to come back. He doesn't want to come back. So I took a chance in trying to speak to him face to face. And that's that just, it, it, I was rejected. I was shut down. But you'll blow, but, but he's in my inbox and he's um texting me. And, you know, I'm just trying to figure out what should I do. 
So, I just realized that that's just more determination and motivation for me to take care of myself. Because I can't depend on him. I can't depend on you to give me a decent conversation face-to-face. Um, and all you want to do is give me half ass dry texts. So, I leave those alone. But I will say this. I have been entertained for the last 24 hours. Probably this time yesterday. So, yeah, a whole day. I found a site... And I'm no stranger to um, internet dating. Sorry, I'm just not. But I found a site and, you know, I've been having conversations with these different people. It's very entertaining. It's very time consuming. Which means I'm not laying here crying, sad and sobbing because I'm all by myself. Because I'm having conversation. So I just want to know what people think about the whole online meeting people. Like, even if you don't meet, do you think it's okay for me to use this as an advantage to the fact that I'm home alone? I just want to talk to somebody. And these guys are willing to talk. I don't know what their hidden agendas are, even if they have hidden agendas. But they're willing to talk to me. So what do you think about that? Like, um, the ex-boyfriend was in my inbox. That's how we met. Oh, a little over a year ago, he was inboxing me. Hey, beautiful, how you doing? I came across your profile on Facebook. Bam, we're together. So, I'm not trying to have another one of those remakes, but I have met people offline before, and not all of them have been bad people. They just haven't been long-term relationships. So, I'm not looking for a relationship. However, if one finds me somewhere in the future, you know, like over there in the future, not not now, but over there, yeah, so 